Over the last three episodes of Graph Theory, we have been looking at concepts and algorithms that support topological sourcing. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it all up. We're going to look at some interesting applications of topological sorting, as well as how we can actually extend these algorithms. You're watching another episode of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. Today's video comes to you in two parts. First of all, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can extend these topological sorting algorithms to detect cycles. And then in our second part, we'll be looking at how we can actually extend topological sorting to pathfinding. Unfortunately, these two things are not very connected, which is why, you know, we're throwing them all in a wrap up episode. But hopefully this video will still be helpful. With that said, let us jump into part one. First, finding cycles. Now, as I've mentioned to you originally, TopoSort only works on DAX, and that is a directed acyclic graph. If we have this restriction in place, then we don't technically need to check to make sure that, you know, the graph doesn't have a cycle. However, it is always safer to check, you know, defensive programming and all. And in fact, it is not very difficult to extend Kant's algorithm and Tarjan's algorithm to do this check. Of course, if we are able to look for cycles in the input, then these topo sort algorithms will have their restrictions basically loosened. We can now say that we accept any directed graph. If we find cycles, we'll complete, and that's it. So with that said, I hope you can sort of see why we want to do things this way. Let's now take a look at how we can extend both these algorithms to do that check. First, Kant's algorithm. Now, recall that basically Kant's algorithm keeps deleting edges so that it can find nodes with no incoming edges, and that will be one of the nodes that can be visited next. What this implies is that we can never visit a cycle, because, well, an incoming edge will always be there. We can never break through and enter that cycle. So, as a result of this happening, what's going to happen is that these nodes will never get pushed into the next queue. What that means is, if we actually finish our entire algorithm such that the queue is empty, and yet we still have edges in our graph, this indicates that there is a cycle. To make things more concrete, let us take a look at the extended algorithm. Well, the only change is actually here, and that is, at the end of our while loop, we check to see if any edges are left in the graph. So yeah, nothing too complex. In fact, let's jump straight into a very simple example here. Of course, we start with our node A, since it has no incoming edges. As per usual with Kant's algorithm, after we are done exploring a node, we take away the edges that are outgoing from that node. The check here fails, since the only neighbor B still has an incoming edge. So as a result, the next array is actually empty at this point, but there are still edges left. And that is sufficient for us to throw an error right here. For Tarjan's algorithm, this process is a little bit more complex. Remember that Tarjan's algorithm is based on depth first search. And if depth first search ever encounters a cycle, well, it just gets into deeper and deeper recursive cults, never having a chance to come back out. To prevent this, we have to actually augment every vertex with a flag. Now, every time a recursive call actually visits a particular vertex, we mark it as visited or, you know, in the process of being visited. When done correctly, if you are going, you know, deeper and deeper into recursive calls and you encounter a node that has the flag already set, what this indicates is that earlier on you have already visited it and you were not done with its recursive call. This can only mean that a node has somehow led us all the way back to itself, and that indicates a cycle. Anytime this happens, we can basically stop everything we're doing and simply quit and say, well, we've found a cycle. We cannot continue. In actual code, the extension for Tarjan's algorithm is a little bit more involved than Kant's algorithm. In fact, it no longer fits in one screen, but well, the changes are not very difficult to comprehend. In fact, 
The changes involve the mechanism to add a temporary marking to each node. So yeah, as mentioned, each node gets marked when it first gets visited, and when the whole visiting is done, the node gets unmarked. So let's see this in action here. This of course is the starting portion where we just create all our arrays and begin to visit all the nodes. So we visit node A, and for the purposes of this demonstration, we will indicate the temporary marking as a red ring around the node. So yeah, we start off at A, no problem here. We traverse down towards B, to C, to D, to E, and back to B, because well, there is a cycle here that in fact allows us to do this indefinitely. However, when we get to B, we realize that the temporary mark is already present there. And what this means is in our current recursion, we have actually gotten here before, and it would not be advisable to continue because that would send us down in a loop that never ends. So yeah, in fact, once we see this, we can quit. And what I mean by quit is entirely stop doing any more of Tarjan's algorithm, because once there is a cycle, there will be no valid topological sorting, so we don't have to do any more work. So let us move on to part two of this episode. Now, we sort of interrupted our discussions on pathfinding to talk about topological sorting. This is for a good reason, because I wanted to wrap up the discussion on pathfinding by talking about some other algorithms that also happen to do pathfinding. One such example is of course topo sort, and I couldn't talk about it until, you know, we've actually looked at it. So now that we have, we can now discuss this entire point. One of the simplest examples is breath first search. Now, here's the deal. Breath first search, of course, well, is breath first in nature, and what that means is it will try to visit as many nodes as possible while taking as little steps as possible. And of course, by steps, I mean, you know, the number of intermediate vertices. What this means is if your graph is unweighted or equally weighted, then the distance directly corresponds to the number of hops, you know, the number of intermediate vertices you have to go through to get from point A to point B. Since breakfast search tries to avoid going through more hops, what you get at the end of the day is, well, a set of shortest paths. So yeah, breakfast search can work as a shortest pass algorithm as well. And of course, topological sorting also can do the same. Because topological sorting rearranges all the vertices in the order of, you know, what comes first, then what comes next, we actually already have half the battle won. So let us now explore what is probably the most interesting thing we can do with topological sorting, and that is to find shortest paths. Now, this technique is actually very similar to Dextra's algorithm, but well, once we get there, I will point out the similarities. So the first thing we have to do in this algorithm is to generate a topological sorting. So what I'm going to do here is a very quick intuitive trace of Kant's algorithm, we of course start from C, where there are no incoming edges. We then move on to A, that allows us to gain access to B and D, in turn giving us access to E and F, and finally G, giving us this topological sorting as a result. With that done, we can begin to do the things we normally do to set up Dextra's algorithm, which is of course to set up a distance array, as well as a parent array. So the presentation is going to be exactly the same as in Dextra's algorithm. We're going to be showing the distances in these little boxes, and we will be showing the parent relationship as colored arrows. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our topo sort result. And for each one of these, we're going to actually try and push the weights forward, just like in Dextra's algorithm. So we're looking at the first item in our topological sorting, we try to propagate the weights forward, and that gives us the weights 3 and 7 at A and D respectively. Once we're done with this, we move on to A. Once again, we push the weights forward, giving us weights at B and F. Of course, we do not propagate the weight over to D, because going through this path gives us a heavier weight than if we just went directly from C to D. So with that done, we move on to B. B is pretty simple, it only has one more node. So once again, we propagate the weight forward. Once we're done with B, we move on to D. 
It has three neighbors and repropagate some of the weights forward. In the case of E, we of course knock out the existing more expensive edge. And this happens because this conditional is true. So once again, this is exactly like Dextra's algorithm. So with that done, we move on to E. E has no neighbors, so we don't have to do any of the hard work here, allowing us to move directly on to F. F only has one neighbor, which is G, and well, it happens to have the lighter weight, which is why we push the weight forward, and we knock out this existing edge right here. That allows us to move on to G, which is the final item, but it has no neighbors, and what that means is we are entirely ready to terminate. Now, why do I say this is like Dextra's algorithm? Well, in fact, all the lines of code, excluding the very first line, is basically Dextra's algorithm. Of course, Dextra's algorithm does something different. It always has to choose which node to go next by looking for the minimum accumulated weight. We've replaced that with doing a topological sorting instead. And there you go, that is a wrap up on topological sorting and also really on pathfinding. Next time, we are still going to be talking about a pathfinding algorithm, but this one is slightly more involved because it involves finding what is known as all pairs shortest paths. And there you have it, that's all there is for this episode. I hope you've learned something today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.